Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Well, it's time to pray again. And the thought that came to mind was the passage of scripture found in the book of Luke, the fourth chapter. And I don't know about you tonight, but what I know about the word of God, the word of God to me is life. The word of God to me is strength. The word of God to me is my help. The word of God to me is what I live. Hallelujah. The word of God to me is what I dream about. What I, hallelujah, what I eat. Hiya. It's my bread. Hallelujah. So I love the word. I love reading it. I love, hallelujah, when God begins to minister. And when he begins to minister, it's so much that I have to give it back to you. Hallelujah. I have to give it out. For God is a God that is not selfish. God is a God, hallelujah, that looks at the masses. And when he calls a servant, when he calls a person, he didn't call them just for their self. I can stay here and get all this goodness all by myself, but that's not what God has called me for. He has called me, hallelujah, to give what he has given unto me. And so as I was studying the text in the gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, I began to read from the beginning because what I like to do to get the whole uh, truth of what God is saying, you have to read the scripture verse by verse, line by line. You have to read. You can't just pick a scripture out and run, you know, run with it. No, you got to know what was going on. You got to know when it was going on, why it was going on. You have to do inductive is what is called uh, Bible study. And so as I began to inductively look at the text, uh, as I began to look what happened in the beginning of Luke, the first, the fourth chapter and the first verse. The Bible says that Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. That's a word for somebody right there, even before we get into the prayer. You must be full of the Holy Ghost if you are going to be effective for the kingdom of God. If you're going to put the devil in his place, you are going to need the Holy Ghost. The Bible declares in the book of Acts, the first chapter and the eighth verse, the Bible says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Why were the apostles able to spread this gospel all throughout the land? Why were they able to stand up against a Roman government that wanted to keep their mouth shut? Why is it that they were able to heal the sick and raise the dead? Why was it that they were able to proclaim that Jesus got up from the grave. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible lets us know that at the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, when the Spirit of the Lord came and rested upon them, things began to happen. The church began to grow. The church began to spread the news. People were getting saved. People were getting healed. Why? Because the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, was empowering them to do the will of God. The Holy Ghost was able to make them bold and stand up against the devil that was working through that Roman government. And so Jesus, going back to our text in the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, and again, the first verse, it says that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, returned to Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Don't miss that. Sometimes God will lead you into, uh, hey, when you when he wants you to stand against that evil one, he'll lead you into it. To let that devil know uh, that the word of God is eternal. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, it'll cut that devil down. Uh, the word of God has been given unto his people that they might 
have the victory over the enemy when he comes to lie, just like what he was doing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Bible lets us know that after 40 days of being tempted by this devil, he became hungry, hallelujah, and afterward he thirsted. And you know what? When you're at your weak point, that's a word for somebody right there too. You might be at a weak point. You might be at a point where the devil thinks that he can gain the victory over you. But I came tonight to remind somebody, hey, you at your weakest when you are with God, all you need, hallelujah, is to be in, hallelujah, communion and fellowship with God, be in right standing with God. For when you are in right standing with God, the Bible declares that Jesus said, all that the Father has given me, I have not lost none. Jesus has us in the palm of his hands and nothing, no devil, no bad words spoken, no evil people that rise up against you, Nothing can pluck you out of his hands. Not even the temptations that the devil throws your way. For he is a liar. The Bible says that he is the father of lies. He's speaking. When he speaketh, he speaks not the truth. So if he's saying something to you, here's another word for you. It's probably, hallelujah, the, just the opposite. You ain't going to make it all God says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah, you're more than a conqueror. Oh, whatever he says, know that it's a lie. And it's probably because he knows uh, that God has ordained you. God has called you and he has great things. See, he doesn't waste time on those that are not really doing anything for the kingdom. But if you are doing something for the kingdom of God, uh, hallelujah, if you have taken a stand for the Lord, you better believe that evil one is going to come and see what he can do to stop it. But the Bible. Bible declares uh, that upon this rock I build my church uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Try, try, try as he may, uh, he shall not prevail. And this is what he was doing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, who was here on a mission. Jesus came down to, ta to take away the sins of this world. Jesus came down to go to Calvary, hallelujah, to die in in our place. Jesus came to be God's higher than almost God's spotless lamb. He came, hallelujah, to bear the sin that none of us could bear. And so here comes the evil one. As God led him, the spirit of the Lord led him, led Jesus into the wilderness. Here he comes to tempt our Lord. He says, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread and here's what our lord said to him and jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god this is found in the gospel of luke i'm reading from the fourth chapter verse five says and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. Here's another message, but we're going we to skip by that. We'll come back to this one day. But he says, if thou sh therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered him, saying unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only shalt thou serve. See, you got to know when you are walking in this land, when you are amongst everything that the evil one wants to do, when you are amongst the people whom the evil one wants to use, uh, when you are on a job where, you know, the evil one wants to use that against you, when you are in a family where the evil one wants to use uh, all kinds of people in your family, even those that are closest to you, to try to destroy you, you 
must never bow down to that devil. You must never bow the knee to Baal. You must never listen to what the devil is trying to say in your ear. But only remember what the word of God says. Only remember the word where God said, my word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I have sent it to do. My word is sharper than any two-edged sword. I watch over my word, he says, to perform it. God is powerful. God is more powerful than this created devil. The devil is not equal to our God. He is a created being. Therefore, there is something greater. And that something that is greater is our God. And just as the enemy came and tried to tip Jesus with some little temporary worldly things. When Jesus had come from heaven to a kingdom, from a kingdom I should say, that shall never end. From a kingdom where the streets are made of gold. From a kingdom where his throne is jasper and all of this precious jewels. From a kingdom where all power and authority is ruled from that kingdom. How be it a devil is going to come with some broke down temporary some broke down temporary things that he thinks he can pull you away from God with and just as Jesus got that devil off his back it is written hallelujah stay in your word remembering what God has said over your life Jesus knew who he was and he knew the purpose for which he was here you must know who you are you must know your purpose or that evil one will be able to shift you but I said all of this in the chapter of uh, in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke to take you to the scripture that I wanted to pray over with you and I wanted you to know tonight. Remember, Jesus knew exactly who he was. That's why when this time of testing and tempting, hallelujah, was over, He, the Bible lets us know in the same Gospel of Luke, hallelujah, the fourth chapter, it says beginning at verse 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of God. See, he got through with the enemy, put the enemy in his place. Now, you know what? Now it's time to do what I've been called to do. Some of you need to tell that devil, get thee behind me, Satan, and start walking towards your purpose. Start doing what God has called you to do. And the Bible lets us know he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and his, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read from the book of Isaiah. Let me read to you what the Bible says. In verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hallelujah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, devil, I'm going to tell you what I'm here for. I'm not here to bow down to you. I'm not here to turn my back on God. But why I'm here, this is why, devil, in case you don't know, that's why I am here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes, devil, that's why I'm here. I'm here to take back uh, what you have stolen illegally from the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm here to break the chains, hallelujah, that you have put on uh, the people of God. Uh, I'm here to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, those that are poor in spirit, uh, those even that are poor in finances. Uh, God is able, hallelujah, to set them free. That's why I am here. So know who you are. Know why you are here, your purpose. Uh, and know the power that the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob has given unto his people. So that is the word for you today. Stay focused on what God has called you to do. Break the chains. You want to be blessed? Didn't he say, hallelujah, this is the fast that I have chosen, that you break the chains, you set the captives free. You want to be blessed? You want to get a breakthrough? Help somebody else break through. Help somebody else get delivered with all that power you got. When you have the Holy Ghost, huh? there's enough anointing in you. If God be for you, who? can be against you. So let us pray. Let us pray that we walk in the calling. Let us pray that we walk in the power of God. Let us pray that we do the things that God has called us to do. Let us be about the Father's business. Breaking the chains that the devil has put on the lives of people. And I'm here to give you a word. As you do that, as you take care of others, hallelujah, as you do the kingdom business, this God is going to break forth in you. Your light is going to shine. Hallelujah. You're going to get the breakthrough that you have been desiring from the Lord. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you, God, with a grateful heart. God, I come before you, God, with a heart that is full, full of your love, full of your joy, full of your peace, full of the Holy Ghost, God. Grateful, Father, for all that you have done. Grateful for calling us all out of darkness into a marvelous light. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, God, for setting us free. For he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So I give you praise tonight, great God. I give you glory. I give you honor and majesty belongs to you. King of kings and Lord of lords, I worship you. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ah, the Son of God who has paid the price for our sin. I give you praise tonight, Father God. And Lord, I bring your people and myself before you, Father God. Let us all be about the Father's business. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him because you had anointed him to preach the gospel. Anoint, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus your people in this last and evil days huh, to preach the gospel, Father God, huh, to heal the brokenhearted, huh, to preach deliverance to the captives huh, and recovering of sight to the blind, huh, to set at liberty those that have been bruised, Father, by the evil one. Huh. So, Father, I lift up your people, God. Let your word go forth, Father, in their heart. Huh. Let it get rooted and grounded, Father, that it might produce the fruit, Father, that it might produce the results huh, for which you have had me to speak it. Huh. And so, Father, all throughout this land, huh, I pray for the men and women of God, huh, those that stand in the pulpit, Father God, huh, those that preach your word, Father God, huh, those that watch over your people, Father God. Huh. Oh, God, give them a double portion tonight of your anointing, Father. Oh, God, give them a rhema word for the people, Father. Encourage their hearts, God, huh, and give them the desires of their heart, Father God. Huh. More glory, more grace, Father, and more power for your people. Father, I pray for this year, United States of America, Father God. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and I come against every ruling authority that has been sent, God, to cause division. Every ruling authority, Father God, that has been sent, Father, to stir up hatred, Father. Every ruling authority, Father, that has been sent, Father God, oh God, to place your people against each other. So I take authority in the mighty name of Jesus huh? and I bind the devil right now in Jesus mighty name and command them to go back to the abyss huh? from whence he came. Huh? Oh God never to return again father. I take authority over all the witchcraft throughout the land. Huh? Oh I plead the blood of Jesus huh? over your people father God. Huh? Oh God I pray for those God huh? that are struggling God. Huh? I pray for the sinner God. Huh? I pray for the black slider God. Huh? I pray for those that are in prison. I pray for those that are in the hospital. I pray for the widower tonight, God. I pray for the orphan tonight, God. Let your people arise, God, and take care of those that are in need. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God. My soul.